in my civil job, I'm a researcher, drug policy researcher, so I'm conducting a study directed at cannabis market and the risks recreational users take under different policy settings. There are flyers in the corridor of my study. You're welcome to talk to me about that. But there's also an activist part of my job, which somehow emerged around the topic of medicinal cannabis. So I'm here to tell the story about medicinal cannabis reform in the Czech Republic that was successfully completed about two years ago. And about a month ago, we had uh, the first prescription for medicinal cannabis dispensed through a pharmacy. And it would be a herbal product, a bot, if you want to call it, not uh, a pharmaceutical preparation or whatsoever. Uh, Bendula, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on all of this, considering that you've been looking at a comparative study of cannabis policies and markets between Czech, the US and Australia. Where do we stand in all of this? Because part of your studies are, well, yes, yeah, someone just said we don't, and that's probably um, a, a good point to make. But part of your thing is that um, you believe, I guess, that, um, that there is a large space diversion, um, that it's opened up in a number of countries and that there's no uniform uh, or very few countries, from what I understand, um, that have a uniform law around it, and particularly federal law. Uh yeah, uh, let's talk more about the medicinal cannabis reform rather than the recreational markets, which is the, the subject of my comparative sure. study. But I, I'd just like to make this uh, important point about the uh, registration of the medicine. We've been hearing here the entire day that uh, we need to have a TGA-approved drug in order that it can be prescribed by the doctor and dispense in pharmacies. But if you take a look at the models that are out there in the world at the moment, there are two models that have been adapted that are very much in line with the United United Nations treaties that are just doing everything they're required to and at the same time they're dispensing herbal cannabis in pharmacies and that goes through the line of compounding medication so it's the doctor that prescribes the certain amount of THC and certain amount of CBD and the pharmacist chooses the, the right form to administer this drug whether it's going to be a tincture or whether it's going to be the, this herbal product he chooses to give so, so that's one in, important distinction and also one of the important important options that it's not necessarily that there is a five years uh, long clinical trial needed in order to get patients into a standard medical treatment with cannabis. Thank you. If that's fine to answer like this. And I have a question for Dr. Belakova. In the Czech Republic, is it only through um, the distribution through chemists and um, doctor's prescriptions or do you also include natural herbal practitioners? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so in the first place in the Czech Republic, anyone can cultivate up to five plants of cannabis for their own use, no matter whether they're medical patients or they're not. So, so that's what you start with when you're designing your medicinal cannabis laws, because then you're thinking of those patients who have constitutional right for the most effective treatment, and they should be receiving in the, this type of treatment through standardized means. They should be able to consult their doctor and get it prescribed. So the model we came out with, which is very much in line with the treaties, is that the doctor prescribes, uh, the state is... Uh, um, licensing growers that uh, have to produce standardized product and get it to pharmacies and before this is delivered to pharmacies we will be importing or we started importing from the Netherlands which is the only country that you can lawfully import from at the moment so we were not really faced with the situation of thinking of what to do for those that for whatever reason choose to cultivate themselves but still we don't think this is an appropriate way to to go for people with serious health conditions. Thank you. So do you think that um, based on the model that you're using, would it be um, possible, because here in Australia we have a very large um, community of natural therapies and growing and growing, do you think that it's feasible using your own model um, that would actually spread through the natural therapies and those practitioners, not just through the doctors and pharmacists? Uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, cannabis is still an internationally controlled substance. And as an internationally controlled substance, you should regulate it through prescription. So if these practitioners could prescribe lawfully, then they could, of course, handle the substances. But I, I assume that's not the case. And I think we can all see that there are things changing in terms of the international treaties. And many things will change in a uh, horizon that might be still that what we will see in our lives, right? But uh, as long as it's controlled and if the national country wants to abide to the treaties, then that this should be respected. Um, yeah. Thank you. 